All right, guys, so a lot of people have been asking once again for a build for every single class, every single class composition for the day one contest mode raid Crota's end. So I wanted to take the time to make a single video for each of the three classes in the game, uh, whether it comes to damage, whether it comes to mechanics, whether it comes to making ammo, all the goals that you kind of need to meet for a day one. This video will hopefully cover everything for our first class, which is going to be Warlock. So before we talk about the specifics of the Warlock build that I'm going to talk about today, we have to go over the three basic goals that I have going into making every build for a day one video. Number one, that's going to be survivability over damage, right? So this is prioritizing consistency, survivability over damage. Number two, it's going to be mechanical simplicity. What do I mean by that? I mean something, think about Hammer Titan, right? When you're using Hammer Titan, it's extremely brain dead. The build practically plays itself. So I'm going to focus on making builds that do not require a lot of thinking. They just require a very basic understanding of the build so that your mind, your headspace can be focused on mechanics rather than focused on staying alive or playing perfectly. All right. And number three, we have ammo management. So this is going to be a bigger problem, especially with the rocket nerf, uh, with the uh, double special nerf, ammo management is going to become a problem as well. So these builds are all designed focusing on these three goals. Okay, so for Warlock, I think the only major core class subclass build is going to be Dawnblade. So Void Warlock, Stasis Warlock, Strand Warlock, Arc Warlock, they are all decent in their own respects, but of course Well of Radiance is an absolute necessity for day one, so that's why I chose to use Dawnblade for this day one build. And of course, naturally with Dawnblade comes Sunbracers, okay? So Sunbracers is going to be the neutral gameplay exotic in this build. Um, the other exotics that you're going to need are Cenotaph Mask, Aeon Soul, and Lunafaction Boots. But all three of those exotics, you're only going to be swapping to them for a very short amount of time to make a finisher, to mark a target, or to place a well for your teammates so that they have high reload and range. So how does the Sunbracers build work? So let's briefly talk about some of the choices that I made in this build so that you can understand how the build works at a base level. So first we have the two aspects. We have Touch of Flame and Heat Rises. A lot of you might be asking, you know, why no Icarus Dash? You know, you, you like Icarus Dash for movement. I totally get it. When I use Sunbracers in my normal gameplay and I'm not doing a GM and I'm not doing a contest raid, I love using Icarus Dash as well. However, there's two essential components in Sunbracers, in the Sunbracers build that you cannot live without on a day one environment. And that's going to be number one, your solar grenades should be boosted by touch of flame. And that is because under contest, a regular solar grenade is not going to be enough to handle the, the high health pools that something like a knight or something like an ogre, anything that's a major like a champion is going to have. So in a day one environment, those extra globs coming from your touch of flame solar grenades, as opposed to a regular solar grenade, they're going to be very, very noticeable in a day one environment. Number two, we have heat rises. Now you might be asking, you know, why not use touch of flame and Icarus dash? Well, number one, heat rises is more consistent than Icarus dash and Ember of Seer in getting your melee back, which is absolutely essential to Sunbracers in keeping that gameplay loop going. But number two, when you have Heat Rises active and you use Phoenix Dive, you get tier two restoration for four seconds, which is the absolute most essential component, core component of this build. And I'll go over that. I'll go over why that is in a second. So let's briefly talk about tier two, two restoration. So tier two restoration is almost well level healing. We're talking, you're getting half your health bar in a manner of seconds. Uh, it is absolutely insane how good tier 2 restoration is. Forget Woven Mail, forget Devour. Tier 2 restoration is like being a portable Well of Radiance, which is absolutely 100% uh, insane for a day one raid, especially when you're considering how easy it is to extend this restoration effect. So briefly, before I go over the fragments that make this build so good, I choose to use Strafe Glide on this build because Heat Rises with Strafe Glide tends to be very good, especially without Icarus Dash. Really, really good for bouncing around and carrying your momentum, especially with an Eager Edge Sword. I have uh, Incinerator Snap. Now, Celestial Fire was recently fixed to work with Sunbracers correctly. However, Incinerator Snap does more damage, even though it has less range, and it's almost guaranteed to ignite a, a, an enemy if you have Ember of Ashes and you know what you're doing with Incinerator Snap. Next, we also have Solar Grenade. I mean, that's a pretty obvious pick with Sunbracers. I don't think I need to explain that. So let's briefly go over the fragments. So the fragments here, the two essential fragments that you 100% need on a Sunbracers build are Ember of Ashes and Ember of Empyrean. Ember of Ashes, you apply more Scorch, stash, uh, more scorch stacks to target, sorry. Um, the reason why this is so important is because obviously your Solar Grenades apply Scorch to your targets, so they're going to do more damage over time, get those Ignites faster. But of course, 
Ember of Ashes is even more important because your snap melee becomes a lot more forgiving. Even if you miss some of the projectiles in your snap cone, as long as most of them hit a target, it is guaranteed to ignite. And of course, an ignite is much more guaranteed, uh, much more likely, sorry, to kill an ad to get Sunbracers ready, which is absolutely important. If you melee an ad and you don't get Sunbracers ready, you're in big trouble on this loadout. So that's why Ashes is so important. Empyrean is the other fundamental core fragment of this build. The reason why Empyrean is so good is like it says, anything where you're getting a solar kill, whether that's a solar trace rifle, Ariana's Vow, Galley, solar grenades, your snap, anything that's a solar kill, including ignites, that is all going to extend your restoration and your radiant timers that are currently applied, which is absolutely insane because it means that you can Phoenix dive and during those four seconds, as long as you are getting solar kills, whether it's your grenades or anything that I mentioned before, your restoration timer will go right up to 12 seconds, which is absolutely insane. You have 12 seconds of basically well-level healing while you can run around and continue killing adds. That's why Ember of Empyrean is so good. As for the other two fragments, you have an option, you have choices between four fragments. The two that I chose to use in my build are Ember of Torches, so that my Trace Rifle gets Radiant. Just a good, you know, general pick because you get a 25% damage buff, as well as Intrinsic Anti-Barrier on stuff like Trace Rifles or really anything. Really fantastic, uh, great fragment to have. And then of course you have Ember of Singeing. Ember of Singeing, it basically makes it so that any time that you are scorching a target, you get faster uh, class ability regeneration, which is great because Phoenix Dive is, uh, is, is essentially like a healing grenade. It, it can save you in a pinch on a day one, especially if you have Heat Rises active. Uh, as for the other two fragments, you can also run Ember of Solace. Ember of Solace will make it so that it's more forgiving between restoration procs. You have a longer time, a longer maximum time. Um, so it makes it a little bit more consistent in that regard. But I do prefer the two fragments that I've chosen here. And then, of course, you have Ember of Searing. Ember of Searing is really not necessary on Heat Rises as long as you get even three or four solar grenade kills in the time that you have your solar grenade active. Um, you are going to get your melee back because of Heat Rises. Ember of Searing is really mostly for people who are using Icarus Dash, which, like I said, um, if you use Icarus Dash, you are either giving up those high damage grenades or you're giving up Restoration times 2, which is absolutely essential. Okay, so that's how the Sunbracer's ability setup plays out. Um, in terms of weapons, before I briefly go over how to actually play this, I would strongly recommend Conditional Finality or Arbalist as your exotic, and then maybe Path of Least Resistance or Retrace Path with Shoot to Loot, uh, or Adaptive Munitions on Retrace Path is also a good shout for Barrier Champions because you're going to have constant Radiant uptime. Again, this build doesn't require much to get started, just use your Trace Rifle to weaken an add, and then snap it, and then you're, you're pretty much good to go. Uh, I'm going to briefly give you guys a sample of what Sunbracer's gameplay looks like, the gameplay loop looks like, and then I'm going to talk about how this integrates into the larger scale of armor mods, artifact mods, and weapons, uh, as well as damage, and then, uh, and then that'll be it for the video. So briefly, I'm going to show you how to do a kind of Sunbracer's gameplay loop. So first, you're going to pop heat so that you have your heat rises active so that when you Phoenix dive, you do get restoration, and of course, you're going to get your nade back as soon as you get Sunbracer's ready. So you're going to pop heat. You're going to weaken an enemy. In this case, this enemy has an arc shield, so I pop it using my sword, which splashes the thrall. And then, I mean, the thrall was going to die to my, my snap anyways, but this is a good idea regardless. Use your trace rifle, whatever it is. Snap downwards. Always, when you're trying to get an ignite on adds, the biggest mistake I see people use is use their snap horizontally. If you use your snap horizontally, you're going to hit maybe one third of it on an ad. Always, always, always jump over an enemy and aim downward. And the, the snap cone, if you aim downward, gravity affects the projectiles more. They bunch up more. And also, they have uh, snap also has a, a decent splash radius. So if you aim at the ground and there's an ad nearby, as long as you hit the ground, you will still hit the ad and you'll still ignite the ad. And then boom, you just throw nades, you phoenix dive, and then notice my restoration goes right up to 12 seconds. And then you're pretty much that you just do this repeatedly. And um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Very, very simple. That's, that's how the Sun Racers loop works. Um, yeah, let's talk about roles. Now let's talk about roles. Not weapon roles, but team roles. So in a day one setting, what should your well warlocks, what should your Sunbracers warlocks have on for damage, and what should they be doing when it comes to galley, tractor, lumina, whatever it is? So I would say personally, I don't think having your well warlock be on tractor is a good idea. I think that's best saved for another class. Lumina, I also think is better off on hunter because that way the hunter doesn't, uh, that way a warlock is not wasting special ammo in their kinetic slot because a hunter is likely to be on lucky pants anyway with malfeasance. So being on lumina is no ammo loss. Uh, and no problem really there. 
So if you do want to have your Warlock be on a specialized role, like a galley or something like that, uh, instead of just being on a typical rocket uh, loadouts, I would say having them be on the Galahorn role is a good idea because Galahorn is excellent. It synergizes very well with Sunbracers. You can shoot Galahorn into a room of adds and then Phoenix dive, and then you'll basically be guaranteed to have restoration. So Galahorn is really, really great if you really value consistency. It guarantees that even if you don't have solar grenades, you get a free restoration proc no matter what, as long as you have heat rises active. Um, in terms of Galahorn and doing damage, I would say your kinetic option is probably situational. Uh, you can run Forbearance in Galahorn and like a Blinding GL or Heritage or Succession, whatever it is. And then when it comes to damage, I would say your damage rotation should be... Um, I personally recommend on Galahorn using Double Sniper. So if an enemy is far away and you can't double slug or double pellet, which are fairly obvious, or use fusion rifles, I would recommend double sniper. I would use the Supremacy with Kinetic Tremors, Enhanced Kinetic Tremors, and Enhanced Rewind Rounds, as well as Ikelos SR with 4 times the Charm and Focus Fury. And the way the rotation works is fairly straightforward. Uh, I have it written down in my sequencing spreadsheet over here. If we go to double sniper Galahorn which is right over here. Again, it uses the Supremacy with Kinetic Tremors and Aikilos SR with Focus Fury. All you're doing is you are using uh, the Supremacy. You're shooting two shots. You're shooting four Aikilos SR shots, and then you're shooting one Galley. And you're basically just doing this on repeat. This is a great total damage loadout for a long-range boss. A lot of people are asking me, hey, you know, if a boss is far away, what do I use for Galahorn so I don't just dump all 10 ammo instantly? And this is a really, really great solution. Um, if a boss is not in slug range and you're on Galahorn. Um, one tip I have for Galahorn, Galahorn itself is not very high DPS, as I'm sure you guys know. Many people complained when it was nerfed that it doesn't do very high DPS on its own anymore. So I would say use Galahorn sparingly during damage. Try to use other weapons, your special weapons. Try to maybe throw Sunbracer's nades, whatever it is. Try to use your Galahorn sparingly and use it more outside of damage. Uh, people tend to underrate how good Galahorn is for the actual mechanics part of the encounter itself. When, whether it is you're killing champions, whether it is you're killing majors, or you're doing mechanics, you're doing objectives. Galahorn is great because it gives everybody on your team who's using rockets basically like 300 blast radius rockets, which makes it so that if you're ever overwhelmed by adds, you can clear that overwhelming group of adds very, very easily as a team at just the cost of one galley ammo, plus all of your teammates chipping in a little bit as well. So that's my tips for using Galahorn. Again, great for extending restoration as well. Um, let's briefly talk about armor mods, and then we're going to be done. Artifact mods and armor mods. Uh, in terms of artifact mods, uh, I would say uh, the first two columns don't really matter that much this season. Diviner's discount is nice, but it doesn't really change uh, what's on your boots, so it's, it's not super necessary. Uh, I don't foresee really any of these weapons being used. Of course, Hive don't have overload. Uh, Unstop Scout requires they use a scout rifle, so not great either. Unstop Fusion Rifle is fine, but again, you can use conditional finality, so not super, super important. Uh, in your second column, I would use Origin Perk Specialization 1, because you're probably not using a Strand weapon, so none of these are really relevant. Uh, again, Diviner's Discount. Uh, in your third column, I would just pick uh, two out of the three Elemental Orbs mods that apply to you. So for example, me, Probably if I'm playing Solar Warlock, obviously I'd want Solar, and then i just pick whatever else. In the fourth column, I think the only really uh, significant artifact mod here is Elemental Fury. The other mods are either too short-lived or too situational, uh, especially given how weak Elemental Orbs are under Contest. They don't do enough damage to really kill adds consistently, so these are just okay uh, besides Elemental Fury. And then, of course, in your fifth column, on Warlock specifically, I would use Monochromatic Maestro, because you're on a Solar subclass, so even just throwing a grenade, meleeing a boss, you're going to do great synergy, do more ability damage, do more weapon damage, just great overall. Monochromatic Maestro is great. And then um, Elemental Munitions is the other thing I would run. Um, you can also optionally run Elemental Embrace because you're going to have Radiant and Restoration up constantly. But this is really a, an optional pick for you um, in terms of that. I would, say, um, I would say the main ones are really Elemental Munitions and Monochromatic Maestro. Those are the two most important mods, artifact mods for day one on a Solar Warlock. Uh, okay, so that's artifact mods. Finally, let's talk about armor mods. So armor mods, I actually have them all equipped here, but let's go from head to toe on Solar Warlock. So as you notice, my stat line is basically just 100 Resilience and 100 Discipline. 100 Discipline is not even really necessary on Sunbracer's Warlock because you're more focused on getting your melee more than anything, and getting your melee is just a matter of killing adds while you're airborne. So again, you know, it's not super crazy, it's not that deep. Uh, really, I would just focus on having high resil, decent, you know, recovery, and then if you want to add 100 Discipline in there, you can. 
Um, so that's stats. Let's talk about helmet. Uh, helmet, realistically speaking, on Sunbracer's Warlock, similar to Solar Titan, you're not really getting that many weapon kills. So Siphon Maws are not going to be that useful to you. I would say run an Ashes to Assets and run a Dynamo. Uh, if you run Ember of Singeing, you're going to be getting Phoenix Dive a lot, and having one of each of these is much more efficient than running two of an Ashes to Assets or two of a Dynamo instead. So running one of them, uh, one of each of them, is a great idea. Um, next, we got Sunbracers. Uh, Sunbracers, I would say firepower to shit orbs everywhere wherever you're making, uh, wherever you're throwing solar grenades. Uh, bolstering detonation is good for getting your phoenix dive faster and then arc loader i use this for path of least resistance but you can kind of replace this with whatever weapon uh you are using as your your energy weapon um <laughs> my chat is flaming me right now for not uh, for not engaging guys i'm almost done i'm almost done okay um chest armor i would say this is just situational depending on uh what kind of encounter you're really running into uh, personally, I think uh, Solar Void Concuss is really great for day one uh, for a hive raid. But you know, you know, things change. Boomer Knights maybe become a really big threat, and you want Arc and Sniper. It really depends on the kind of uh, encounter that you end up being in. But uh, it's it's fairly obvious, and you can kind of you know twist this to whatever to whatever ends that you need to meet. Um, leg mods, leg mods. I would say you know recuperation. I mean, you're gonna have restoration constantly, but recuperation is good in a pinch. Stacks on stacks is good for getting your armor charges up for a special finisher. And of course, harmonic scavenger. I'm just matching my apex predator, which is gonna be my heavy weapon or possibly my galley. And finally, um, for the class item, for class item, I have special finisher. Special finisher is, uh, I think everybody on a team realistically should be running special finisher because the person placing the well is obviously going to make armor charges for everyone. So, you know, what are your armor charges doing before damage? Pretty much nothing. Use them to make special ammo. Proximity ward is really great on Solar Warlock because you don't go invisible or, um, you know, have any sort of healing when you're doing your finisher by default. So proximity ward is great for that. And finally, uh, distribution is great. Um, a lot of people believe that distribution doesn't give super energy when you use your class ability in your targets. It still does. Bungie said they patched it. They did not. So distribution is like a mini dynamo that you can add on top of the already insane super energy that you're going to be getting with this build. That's pretty much it for Solar Warlock. Um, just as a reminder, you know, I would probably have uh, one loadout for damage using Sunbracers. I would have one loadout for, uh, sorry, one loadout for ad clear using Sunbracers. One loadout for damage using Luna Factions. I would have maybe a Aeon Cenotaph swap build, right? So that you can just click your build, even though they're, you know, disabled right now. You would click your loadout, finisher a champ or mark a champ or something like that. Switch back to Sunbracers. Uh, obviously, make sure you don't switch your fragments. And um, maybe for final stand, maybe have a Reign of Fire build where you switch to Icarus Dash and you don't need your abilities anymore. But... That's pretty much it for Solar Warlock. Um, if you guys have any questions, you know, leave them down in the comments. And uh, I think next we're going to be doing Titan. So uh, I'll see you around for that.